You ready? Whenever you are. And you're ready? Uh, hello everybody, my name is Statch Elmer, and alongside me is my good friend David Anderson. And I am a cowboy poet, and he is a western musician. And uh, we're going to uh, do a little cowboy poetry for you and play a little for you today. And we're so happy to be here. We've kind of been cooped up all year long, and so we're happy to get out of the house and, and be able to play for some people. So I do cowboy poetry, and uh, those are mostly just stories of cowboys and their experiences. And so this is not a poem that I wrote. This is a Sonny Hancock poem, a classic. And this is about trading horses. And every day I saddle a horse and I get to ride. And that's a great experience. And sometimes with horses you can get into tricky deals. So this is the horse trade. I traded for a horse one time. He wouldn't win no beauty prize. He was just a great big long-eared blue roan gilding. But wasn't too bad for weight or size. Now I had to make some tough old circles, and this trader guaranteed that he'd show me lots of country, not need much rest or feet. He says, now this here ain't no kid's horse, but son, he'll back you up the crick. He might hump up on the occasion, and he has been known to kick. I wouldn't trade him to just anyone without feeling some remorse, but if you're a sure enough puncher, mister, he's your kind of horse. I stepped on that horse next morning, he commenced to buck and bawl. That trader hadn't lied none, but he did not tell it all. Because we sure tore up the country where he threw that equine fit. I about ran out of handholds by the time he finally quit. I guess that must have set a pattern, because he never seemed to change. Though I showed him lots of country, every corner of the range. But every time I'd ride that horse, he'd keep me set and tight. I'd have to make at least three bronc rides before he'd pack me home that night. That would have been all right with lots of horses that I know, but this one had my number, and I'd just barely get him rode. And the thing that really spooked me and put a damper on my pride was that he was learning how to buck harder faster than I was learning how to ride. I pulled into camp one evening, and it was getting pretty late, and I see this strange gray horse in my crowd and a new saddle by the gate. I looked that gray horse over, and I sure liked what I'd seen. And this kid showed up around the barn. Must have been about 16. He said he lamed old gray that morning coming off a granite grave. And he wondered if I had a horse that I'd maybe like to trade. Said he didn't have the time to stop and let him rest and heal. And since beggars can't be choosers, he'd make most any kind of deal. Now when a feller's trading horses, most anything is fair. So I traded him my blue roan for his gray horse, standing there. And my conscience started hurting, and I thought of what I did to trade a flat-blowed horse like that off to some wet-nosed little kid. So next morning after breakfast, I told him, Listen, lad, if you want to know the truth, son, that trade we made was bad. See that blue horse? He's a tough one. As bad as any one you'll see. He'll kick you, strike you, stampede. He's one sorry SOB. It's all I can do to ride him. Something to tell it to you straight, I think you'll be awful lucky just to ride him past the gate. Now there's two or three old horses out there in the saddle bunch. They ain't got too much going for them, but I kind of got a hunch they'll get you where you're going, as long as you don't crowd them none. But oh, I'd hate to see you ride that blue roan booger son. He said, well, sir, I told you last night I'd make most any kind of trade, and I do appreciate you telling me what a bad mistake I've made. But see, my old dad, he told me when you're trading, no matter how you feel, even if you take a whipping, that a deal is still a deal. I traded for him fair and square and damned his blue roan hide. When I pull out this morning, that's the horse I aim to ride. Well, I watched him cinch his saddle up, and he pulled his hat way down, and he stepped up in the saddle like a kid that's bound for town. Stuck both spurs in the shoulders, got that blue roan's hair flying, put his head straight back and screamed like a hungry mountain lion. Now, I've heard lots of stories about the Bucket Horse Ballet. I've heard of poetry in motion, but the ride I seen that day, it plumb defied description. Though I can see it plain, it just happened in slow motion and then got branded on my brain. I don't suppose I could explain it even if I really tried. The only thing I can say is by saints, that boy could ride. He sat there plumb relaxed like he was laying home in bed and 
Every jump that horse would make, the kid was half a jump ahead. When it was all over, I decided I can learn a few things still, and I said, son, I'm awful sorry. I've misjudged your riding skills. He said, shucks, that's okay, mister, and he started on his way. He says, but sir, if you think this horse bucks hard, don't put your saddle on that gray. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, we're grateful to be here. We've been kind of, like I said, cooped up for a year. I'm sure that anybody watching is just about tired of staying home all the time. So we're glad to be out. Thatch and I have been doing this for quite a while. Yeah. What are you now? 18 near? Just about 18, 17, yeah. so it's been about, about eight years. Eight or nine years, yeah. Well, this is a song by Stan Jones. And if you know the words, sing along, because I need all the help I can get with the words. Oh, that's right. They're home. Yeah. <laughs> No cowboy went riding out one dark and windy day. He rested in his saddle as he went along his way. When all at once a mighty herd of red eyed cows he saw thundering through that ragged sky. End up a cloudy draw. Yippee, I Yippee, I oh. Riders in the sky. The brands were still on fire and their hooves were made of steel. Their horns were black and shiny, their hot breath you could feel. A bolt of fear went through him as they thundered through the sky. Saw some riders coming hard, and he heard their mournful cry. Yippee-i-ay, yippee-i-o-ho Those riders in the sky Their eyes were blurred, their cheeks were gone, their shirts also with sweat They're riding hard and catch that hurt, they ain't caught them yet they're gonna ride forever on this range up in the sky From horses snorting fire As they ride on here and cry Yippee-i-ay Yippee-i-o-ho Those riders in the sky Riders pulled down by him, he heard one call his name. You wanna save your soul from hell riding on this range? You better change your ways today, or with this you will ride. Trying to catch this devil's herd across these endless skies. You be I B-I-O Ghost Riders in the sky Ghost Riders in the sky Good work. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, speaking of in the sky, this poem is about a horse in the sky. And uh, this is my very favorite cowboy poem. It's uh, The Walking Man by Henry Herbert Nibs. It's my favorite. It's poem your favorite you too? too? Yes. Yeah. Good. <laughs> Good. A sunny summer day it was when loping into Larry. I overtook the walking man, reined up, and nodded how. 
He'd been a rider once I knew. He smiled, but scarce aware of me, he said, if you'd like me to, I'll tell my story now. For they'll tell you that I'm crazy. Say my wits have gone to glory, but you mustn't be believing every Western yarn you hear. The one I'm going to tell you is exceptional. One you've heard perhaps a dozen times, a dozen ways per year. So he whispered while the shadow of my pony walked beside him. If good people go to heaven, do good horses go to hell? I slung one leg across my saddle and sideways so I eyed it. For I've seen those phantom ponies loping around the big corral and I've seen my pony Yuma. Yes, the horse that died to save me come and nicker at the golden bars while I stood down below calling Yuma, Yuma, Yuma. And still I wonder why he gave me such a friend, why I killed her. It was 20 years ago. You remember it was lonely when we used to guard the cattle, when a man would ride the line for days at the camp at night alone, with nothing much to do except watch the sun rise up for battle and not a soul to talk to, or what's even worse, his own. So I taught that pony Yuma many tricks, for she was human, to rare, shake hands, or pick up anything I dropped till she grew as interested and as gentle as a woman, just to have me praise and pet her. But one day the teaching stopped, because three wrestlers from the knot showed up. I knew there would be trouble. But I sat my pony easy, and we rolled a cigarette, when like a bursting bubble, the leader opened up the fight and I felt my arm grow wet. It was three to one, but Yuma, like a rock, stood to the thunder, for she seemed to know my need. Two empty saddles, when the one that at first tried to get me spurred up close and swung up under. I saw the trail to heaven down the muzzle of his gun. I flinched and played the coward. Up I called and at my call, reared my pony, and she took the shot. I leveled, quick and twice, and in the smoke I could see a twisted figure follow. I could feel my pony shiver. For twenty years now I've paid the price. For my life, yes, hell and Texas leave the hoof prints in some faces. But I have never worn the print of Yuma's hoof print from my heart. I'm the walking man forever, but I dream of mighty ranges and silent mountain meadows and the glory of the stars. And I see those phantom ponies in the dawn and sunset changes. And I can hear my human nicker just behind those golden bars. A sunny summer day it was when loafing in to Laramie, I overtook the walking man, reined up, and nodded how. He walked beside me for a while. He was hardly aware of me. But I think I understand him, for I know his story now. Very good. Thank you. What are you going to play for us, David? I'm going to do Bill Barwick's Silent Lonely Rider. Perfect. You've uh, kind of got me into that there. Yeah. <laughs> Rolls on forever Where the prairie winds can blow So cold and hot Comes a silent lonely rider On his journey Trapped between the sagebrush and the stars Time before the wire and the railroad. The time that once was called the open range. Come a slowly passing shadow down the shifting sands of time. Thinking that his life would never change. Where the sky rolls on forever Where the prairie winds can blow so cold and hard 
comes a silent lonely rider on his journey trapped between the sagebrush and the stars Quarter moon arising in the distance. As he finally stops and throws his bedroll down. The stars of his evening ride a trail that never ends. Falls asleep beneath them on the ground. Where the sky rolls on forever Where the prairie winds can blow so cold and hard Comes a silent lonely rider on his journey Trapped between the sagebrush and the stars Between the sagebrush and the stars. Thank you. Uh, I love that song. Good one. That's a good one. Uh, this poem here is a uh, Larry McCorder cowboy poem. And uh, when I'm choosing classic cowboy poetry, uh, which I love to do because uh, they are so often forgot about. There are so many forgot about great cowboy poems. And so uh, when I choose them, I choose uh, a style that fits the way I like to recite, and it seems like every poem from Larry McCorder does. So this is a, uh, a poem that he wrote, and I, uh, I love to team rope. It's uh, He was born with a rope in his hand. Team roping and uh, any type of rope, and it doesn't matter if there's another guy with me or not, I like the rope. Yes. And, uh, you know, most cowboys love roping, and uh, there's different styles, and everybody has their own way of doing it, and, uh, and everybody kind of likes to poke fun at another person for their different style, and that's just, that's just how cowboys are. So this is a poem about that. Two waddies rode together, or the western half so great. It was a buckaroo from Utah and a hand from the Lone Star State. And though they're raised some different, of friends, they were the best, so of each other's tack and ways, often they'd make jest. Hot debates are often floored of grazing bits or spades. Center fires are double rigs, leather straps or braids. Each one stands a test of time, and each serves a certain need, and each is worth its weight in gold. They finally both agreed. The sticky part, as you might guess in talk of right or wrong, is whether you should dally up or if you should tie on. Utah says, crazy folks like you should be kept up in a cage. Just take your wraps and you, my friend, might see that ripe old age. Because it's easier on your cattle, it's easier on your horse, and though it stands to reason, to be easier on you, of course. Texas says, now, buckaroo, that little spiel was nice, but it don't do cow or horse no good when you've got to catch them twice. I've saved your line a dozen times, all 60 feet of it. You weren't contemplating then, to that you must admit. Utah says, oh, you've saved my string. I must confess it's true, but I'd rather lose a hundred ropes than go what you went through. That time old Peaches blew her cork and then wrapped you in the middle. Me and my old Shrade Walden got your smart self off the griddle. Cowboy, count your blessings that you didn't buy the farm, and the only thing you got out of that little wreck was that big white cast on your arm. Texas says, when you cut a man's line, cut it off by the noose, because instead of one long, I got two shorts, and neither's of much use, and though it's broke, my arm's still here, and in six weeks it'll end, I've still got all my god give parts, and you can't say that, friend. The first time that I met you and I shook hands with you, I noticed 
that you're right for, Pa, is short a toe or two. Now you speak of counting blessings, and all that's mighty fine, but I'll keep the horn knot in my rope, because I can still count on all of mine. <laughs> that's why I don't rope. That's, that's <laughs> I need, a good reason not to. Try to need all the fingers I can get in. Yeah. Buckaroo Man by Dave Staney. In a bedroom of canvas, no seeing feet on your ear. Wind blows the dust just like a shot, and I never seen it rain much out here. Smell your own sweat in the evening. Hush up at that galvanized tank Nearest town, it's 40 miles Look here, he don't smile All these young horses are rank From the tie I pay I owe On the back of my cavallo I will be tied one on when I can Black birds, they don't ring much And I never did sing much But I'm sure A buckaroo man Stiff in the morning By noon it's a hundred and Five-year-old slicks in the canyon And there ain't never a hint of a Jug-headed hollow-back pony because I never know when I'm going to lose a finger, or I might as well not start, you know? Yep, there we go. And so, uh, and so roping is really just what I do. I, I rope every single day. And uh, when you rope every day, there's 
you're going to get to a wreck every now and then. So this poem is about a wreck. It seemed like any other morning, and we were roping steers that day, and when I saddled up my horse, I thought it all would go my way. Now we had ourselves a sorrow mare, and she was short, but wide and tough. A dream to head and heal those steers, but her edges were kind of rough. The steers were wrapped and loaded, and I shook out my rope. I figured I'd better warm her up, so I hit myself a lope. A few laps around the arena, we're ready to turn a few. My cinch is pulled up, all that goes, I'm ready. And so is the crew. Well, I backed her in the corner, put my rope behind my back. The steer was looking straight, so I nod and I cracked the latch. Now we're going down the arena, and I'm swinging with all my arm, just kicking and riding and roping. I wasn't causing any harm. Well, when I'm just about to throw my rope, my horse just disappeared. And I'm soaring now like Superman all through the atmosphere, but the dirt got closer and closer as I soared and flew on down. And I'm thinking now, I'm going to die. And then I hit the ground. But now I'm in a slide and stop. No, I'm not back on my horse. I'm just skidding on my forehead. This is my last resource. Well, there as I'm sliding, I can feel a little tap because my spurs they raked my shoulders. Oh, I think I broke my back. They say we did a full front flip, but I never got to see because I got so much dirt piled in my eyes. I've been washing them for weeks. When I come to all my senses and I got back on my feet, my horse looked fine. So did I. I could have got a scrape at least. When I look back on this story and of the time I hit the dirt, the worst part about all of that is that I ripped my favorite shirt. And that's a true story. That's a true story. <laughs> that's a true story. I remember when you told me that the first time. Yeah. And you know what? You told me a million times how heavy horses are. Yes, I... And at, at that moment there, I realized that you were right. I was telling the truth. <laughs> you were telling the truth. <laughs> I'm going to do one that I wrote. Good. About how long it's been since I started this old game. I've been riding wild horses since I could barely walk. I've been down a lot of long, long roads that just can't seem to stop. The older I get, the harder it is to get up at the break of dawn. Riding wild horses keeps me moving on. Now horses are funny things, and though some folks think they're dumb, you've been smart enough to get in and out of the sun, to find themselves some shelter from the rain and wind and snow. Spend a lifetime trying to find which way to go. Even bad ones have potential, more than lots of folks I've met. If you're really careful, you kind of watch your step. You make a friend and have a ride that only horse folks know. The good it feels to sit a stride. Train to show. I've been riding wild horses since I could barely walk. I've been down a lot of long, long roads that just can't seem to stop. The older I get, the harder it is to get up at the break of dawn. But riding wild horses. Keeps me moving on. Now 
hope this is all I ever do With this life I've chose to live At least I know I've made some friends i still got a lot to give Well, I'll keep riding wild horses As long as I can stand To get up in the morning And watch the sunrise on this great land I'll be riding wild horses as long as I can walk. I head down another long, long road. I just can't seem to stop. The older I get, the harder I'll try to get up at the break of dawn. Riding wild horses keeps me moving on. Riding these wild horses keeps me going on. <laughs> I almost put my rope on her once, but then I thought it through. I'd had my day in the sun long ago, so I left her for someone like you. Sounds to me like she run me off, I said to the silver-haired man. Cause there ain't a cowboy anywhere too much for a hand worth the sand. We were talking about the old red cow, a legend around these parts, and it's been said she put fear and dread into the punchiest cowboy's hearts. An old bearing cow who escaped all the drives cause she was big and mean and clever. The manager said she was 12 years old. That old man said she'd been there forever. Now legends don't scare this boy of 16 who thinks he's the pride of the nation and I'm thinking now if I pen that old cow I'll sure have a good reputation. Where do I find this renegade beast, the scarlet scourge of the prairie? I'll lead the hussy to the bunk cow store and he'll think she was raised on a dairy. I'll lead her in and she'll wear a grin for she'll know she's had her licking Cause I'm a hand from the far away land where the hoot owls romance the chickens. A gleam appeared in the old man's eyes and he was grinning a little too much. He said, I'll tell you where the red cow lives and while you're gone, I'll carve you a crutch. You'll want to give me an address cause you'll want me to write your folks. Oh, I left him there to amuse himself. I didn't care for his little jokes. The Sabbath sun caught me riding old Gus, just sneaking through the brush like a ghost, till we'd come to the mouth of the canyon where that outlaw had been seen the most. We come up on this old dirt tank, and about halfway up the draw, standing there for her morning drink, was the biggest cow I ever saw. Her horns weren't tipped, she wore no brand, and her ears were long and slick, and I thought of a big old rhinoceros I'd seen in a Tarzan flick. Well, I knew if I show myself to her now, back up the canyon she'll go, so I eased up high so I could drive down then catch her in the big flat below. I cinched up a notch and shook out a loop, and I pulled my horn knot tight, and I eased old Gus to the edge of the brush, and we showed ourselves ready to fight. She jerked up her head when we come in the clear, and a startled look filled her eyes. I had to grin for my little rude caught this wily red cow by surprise. She's scared, confused, with no place to hide. I've wrecked her psyche, I think. But she just stood there, sized up to Lady Sapest, and then calmly went back to her drink. We sat there and stared at each other a while till that red cow had drunk her fill, and she stretched out her back and ever so slowly started walking towards me, up the hill, while her stride betrayed no fear at all. It's like she's been through this before. Now then I started to doubt my own smarts and I pondered the red cow's lore. Her slow steady walk turned into a trot and her mouth began to foam and the closer she got, the more I wished that me and old Gus had stayed home. The walls of the canyon somehow looked steeper and a whole lot narrower too and my percep perception had changed on a whole lot of things. My brashness I started to rue because I made my brag back at the ranch about the worth of a man who would balk. And now I found myself fallen victim of my own yapping tongue's foolish talk. My moment of truth was on me now. The smarts was fighting my pride and that cow was locked in on me and old Gus. 
and the outlook was rectified. Now the boss hadn't sent us out here on this wildcat venture as such, and if she don't bother him, well, why should she me? Because no one old red cow don't eat that much. Fifty feet between me and this cow, and another thought entered my mind. There are many like me, but this cow I faced was one of the last of her kind. And who was I to alter her fate? And the freedom she fought long to keep, far be it from me to ruin her life. Oh, I could pen her, but then could I sleep? I cringed at the thought of that grinning old man and scorn I'd see in his eye. But I knew he was right, so I tipped my old hat and the famous red cap trotted by. The old man was waiting as I rode in, with the bunkhouse door open wide. Said, I got things ready for you and that cow, and a stool and a pail set inside. <laughs> he rode me hard and put me up wet till he could see that my pride was full peeled. With the scorn I expected, he never showed it. Said, son, I know just how you feel. There comes a time in every man's life when he's forced to face limitations. Now you feel like a fraud, but your judgment was sound, so son, you ain't no imitation. Oh, you talked a lot, but you took your shot, and that's more than many have done. She force-fed you crow, but that taste we all know. So welcome to the humble ranks, son. Well, years have gone by. I reckon she died. I know I never saw her again, but with all of my heart, I hope that old girl never saw the inside of a pen. And though she's now gone, her legend lives on. I'm proud to be part of her lore, for things have now changed and a brood of her kind is rarely seen anymore. The young sprouts now ask me about the cow, and tight-throated I think of the day. Recall my old friend and what he told me back then, and just grin at those pups and I'll say, I almost put my rope on him once, but then I thought it through. Yeah. That's a Larry McCorder poem there. That's a good one. The Red Cow. We lost Ed Bruce just here recently. He was a songwriter in uh, Nashville, an actor. He was the sheriff in the Maverick series, I believe it was. He and Donnie Blantz wrote this song. You don't see much of the Redskins anymore. The kids don't ride around with royal jeans. That ain't really him. All those feathers in his hat Some Frenchman's name embroidered on his jeans He's still out there riding fences Still makes his living with his rope As long as there's a sunset, he'll keep riding for the brand. You just can't see him from the road. He never learned a two-step. Hell, he barely learned to walk. But he's worn a lot of leather off a tree. He's had one or two good horses that he counts among his friends. And he never drew a breath that wasn't free. He's still out there riding fences Still makes his living with his rope As 
Upon his earth the sunset, he'll keep riding for the brand. You just can't see him from the road. He's tall in the saddle. He's always short on the cash. But he's last to quit. And he's first to buy the beer. He's a knight in leather armor. He's still living by the code that's made him what he's been for a lot more than a hundred years. He's still out there riding fences Still makes his living with his rope As long as there's a sunset He'll keep riding for the brand You just can't see him from the road As long as there's a sunset, he'll keep riding for the brand. You just can't see him from the road. Thank you. Well, I got one more poem. Okay. And uh, if you'll close it out with a song, this is a, a Bruce Kiscatton poem. It's a little bit new to me. I've learned this over the, uh, the COVID break that we had. Uh, and, uh, you had a lot of long time to work on that. I had a long time to work on it, so hopefully I don't mess it up now. Okay. But uh, this is a poem called End of the West. Okay. And uh, so often I found myself wanting to be uh, uh, too grown up. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, yeah. this poem is a little bit about that, and then, and then that old cowboy who wants to go back and be a kid again. Yeah. So this poem is called End of the West. Traced in the flicker of grease wood fire, the cowboy kid saw his heart's desire. Still but a lad in his play cow camp, his ears heard the milling remudas stamp. And he knew his heart would know no rest, till he could scratch him along with the best, and over the shouldered mace's ride, his saddle a-creaking with his horse's stride. A boy a dream of a time when he could answer the range's witchery. Ruddled there by hearth fire's flame is as grizzled and old as a Salem dame. His hair is whitish as alkali. That cowboy kid sees his past go by. He smells the sage off the mace's rim and days come tumbling back to him. Days that were tinged by the smell of hair and burnt till the brand came clean and fair. Nights that were droned by the milling herd, his feeble heart within him stirred. And out of the phantom into the flame, into his soul the old call came. Oh, a heart knows not of when a body is old and riding days or a tale that is told. For now he will saddle and ride o'er the hill and he'll ride to those ranges that beckon him still. And there by the fire as he fell asleep, the old man's pulses seized their sweep of cowboy blood through his leather veins, and a west wind called from the sagebrush plains. And off to dim ranges of old mounted men, that cowboy kid broke forth again. Very good. Did that very well. Thank you. I learned this one just before the COVID break. Mm -hmm. Billy Dean did this one. I don't know whether he wrote it. But it's a good one. It was Betsy Ross that made you 
Captain Driver saved you Some brave Marines raised you On an Emo Jima Kill You've been ripped and torn in battle when guns and sabers rattle But you survive to fly again And you always will Wave on Oh glory, wave on Keep us united Free and strong In the face of all adversity The tax upon our liberty Remind us where our loyalty belongs Wave on Oh, glory, wave on. You rode with Teddy Roosevelt. Your Admiral Harper went bombs fell. You followed our soldiers into hell on the beach at Normandy. You come crashing down. We're the towers, one of our nation's darkest hours. But you rose from the smoke and ash for all the world to see. Wave on, oh glory, wave on. Keep us united, free and strong. In the face of all adversity, attacks upon our liberty, remind us where our loyalty belongs. Wave on, oh glory, wave on. All throughout the course of history, you remind us of our hope and dreams of peace. Wave on, oh glory, wave on. Keep us united, free and strong. In the face of all adversity, attacks upon our liberty, remind us where our loyalty belongs. Wave on, oh glory, wave on. Wave on. Thank you. Well, I had a great time. How about you? I had a great time. Yeah. So, thank you so much for listening. And uh, it was a... Hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. Yeah, it was a pleasure. It always is. Thank you very much.